Well, Mary Massey, let's talk a little bit about evaluation. I want to take you back to the old one. Right? I don't want to age me. I don't want to age <laughs> you. But the aluminum bat, you know, when it sort of went out in the composite, composite bats, and now with the guys doing so much wood bat baseball and tournament baseball, the progression of that. Can you talk a little bit about evaluating a guy and trying to say, okay, we're going to take that out of his hand and put this in his hand? Absolutely. I, uh, there's definitely some uh, now with the way that the amateur world is there's a lot of opportunities to see player, players, position players specifically, swing with a wooden bat, which helps, makes evaluations a little easier. Um, probably five years ago, ten years ago, aluminum bats, it, it makes it difficult to project the, uh, as far as strength. You know, and Paul Snyder talked about it in the draft room this year. You know, with a high school kid, you take 150 points off his batting average. Okay. A college kid, you take 100 points off his batting average. That's how he kind of... Um, Combated the whole wind bat versus aluminum bat. When you look at a 17 year old physically, when you look at a 20 year old, what it, what really is the difference when you talk about the line of certain position players and certain guys sure. might be a little smaller in stature? But that 17 to 20, what does happen? What do you guys take notice of? If you're scouting a guy right. who doesn't sign and he's 20 now, what, what do you need right. him to look like? I guess a, a lot of it depends on the specific person. There's 17 year olds with maxed out bodies right. that walk in and, and are ripped and six packs and um, there's 20-year-olds that have a lot of room for added strength, growth. So it depends on the specific individual. Athleticism is always something, I think, in sports in general, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, soccer, is something that's wanted. And that would probably be the first thing uh, anybody takes a look at, is just how, how good of an athlete is this individual. And once you determine that, then it comes into body. What did the calves look like? How long are the arms? How wide is the back? You know, how, much, how much does family? Do you, do you try to family's big? Yeah, absolutely. Try and look at the parents. You try and look at the brothers, sister. Um, you know, but again, you know, I've there's different different families have different shapes. That uh -huh. trust me, I have three brothers, and you know, they were all lucky with a little more height mm -hmm. and uh, a lot better looking. So, yeah. well, uh, listen, there's still time. Right. Keep telling yourself there's still time. <laughs> What's there used to be this idea, and I want to really know how rare it is or how it maybe comes about how often. People for years have talked about the sound of the ball coming off of that. Right. How realistic is it? And is that something that you guys, when you hear a 17-year-old, close right. your eyes, hear a 20-year-old, how often do you actually really go, that does sound a little different? Well, I, you know, it's amazing. We, I worked with an older scout, um, one of my mentors, Mel Didier, who's uh -huh. as good of a baseball guy as there's ever been. And there were times where, during a batting practice, uh -huh. he'd actually turn around and look towards the stands. I wouldn't even watch the swing, wouldn't look at the hitter, and just listen to the sound of the bat. So I think it's real. Um, uh, is that the end-all, be-all? No. There's certain components that need to make a swing work, especially at the big league level, with the amount of velocity that's in today's game. Uh, the efficiency is, is obviously a really important aspect of the swing. Uh, but there's some truth to it. sounds different. Some guys just sound different. High school versus now all of the tournaments and stuff they play, and how valuable is a high school scouting trip compared to I got to see him play against like quality guys. Yeah, I think the summer the summer events are all, are, are huge. Yeah. Watching watching hitters, watching pitchers face quality competition from all over the country. Um, watching Team USA play different uh, in world tournaments. Right. You know, the ability to see them against upper level competition uh, is really important. Um, is it the end all be all? No. Uh, there's certain there's certain kids, uh, especially high school where that senior year, you know, Velo goes from 90 to 94. Right. You know, uh, strength and, and, and height jump two to three inches over the course of the year. But one of the things that I was told in high school, there's enough scouting, and I know about that kid three towns over. We're, not, we're not pitching to him. Right. So you can spend three days watching Oh, absolutely. Him, and then, you yeah. know, what Well, Jason doing? Hayward. I mean, that was a big, that was a big right. issue with Jason Hayward was people would go watch Jason Hayward play, and he'd walk four times. Oh. Nobody would pitch to him. Right. Um, so... The summer events where the competition, the Under Armour mm -hmm. um, area codes where uh, you don't necessarily want to walk anybody, right. you want to challenge. Same thing with hitters, you're trying to, uh, I, I think they're very important. How much leeway do you give a 17 year old versus a 20 year old, a bat chucker? Uh, you hear parents out of the stands and you go, ooh, okay, we either quality, no problems, background check, right. no problems, and how often do you go, okay, we got to. We got to vet this one out a little bit more because the personality on the field. 
I'm assuming if you're watching everything, that sure. becomes part of the, the conversation. No doubt. And that's where makeup and mm-hmm. area scouts, and you have to know the kids. Right. You have to know the kids. You have to know their families. Right. Um, and that's that's a big part of the job. And there's different personalities that work mm-hmm. just because somebody's a back chucker or right. um, just somebody. You know, the, the I always talk about the, the players that play with not a lot of emotion. And, you know, they walk back to the dugout when they strike out. When they're going bad, they have no energy. This guy doesn't care about the game. Right. When they're going good, wow, he makes it look easy. Yeah. So it's just different personalities. And the big link personality that sometimes exists, how do you guys sort of put that into the equation when a kid, he carries himself and you're okay, at what point do we now go, oh, it might be a little bit problematic? The swagger is a little bit too much. Yeah, we, we try and dial it down. Um, to a certain extent. We don't want to take away who the person is and what they're about, but obviously there's boundaries and there's certain things from a respect level for the game that, uh, that we, we want to make sure our kids uh, abide by down a daily basis. So let me just ask you about arm real quick. Easy gas is an expression that's been around for you have to know the kids, right? You have to know the kids, you have to know their families. Right. Um, and that's, that's a big part of the job. And there's different personalities that work just because somebody's a back chucker or um, just somebody. You know, the, the, I always talk about the, the players that play with not a lot of emotion, and you know they walk back to the dugout when they strike out. When they're going bad, they have no energy. This guy doesn't care about the game. Right. When they're going good, wow, he makes it look easy. Yeah. So it's just different personalities. And the big link like personality that sometimes exists. How do you guys? sort of put that into the equation when a kid he carries himself and you're okay at what point do we now go oh it might be a little bit problematic the swagger is a little bit too much yeah we we try and dial it down um to a certain extent we don't want to take away who the person is and what they're about but obviously there's boundaries and there's certain things from a respect level for the game that uh, that we we want to make sure our kids uh, abide by down daily basis. So let me just ask you about arms real quick. Easy guess is an expression that's been around forever. Right. Everybody's trying to figure out, okay, does he look like the body type or the delivery that he's going to be hurt? Now, nobody's figured it out yet, yeah. but everybody has an opinion about it. How much does that come into consideration when you, when you will, this, will this delivery, right. will these mechanics play for a long period of time? It's huge. Uh, but with that being said, I don't think there are any absolutes. Yeah. There's been plenty of pitchers with I mean, uncommon deliveries, uncommon arm actions mm-hmm. that throw 200 innings a year for 10 straight years. Um, there's guys that look pretty and, you know, that have a textbook delivery and perfect arm action that can't stay on the mound. So I think a lot of it comes with genetics. Um, you know, certain certain genes can handle the wear and tear. Of have you ever walked away because you just said, he gets guys out, but the mechanics are not. They're not really going to fit he- Comfortable. There's certain, I guess, walk away, no, um, but maybe a little more cautious. I want to do a little more background, and I've always leaned towards comps. You know, I'm a big Rolodex guy, um, especially when looking at young kids. Who is this going to be? And I try and think of guys with similar deliveries, similar arm actions, and go from there. It's funny, and let's just finish up with this. It seems to be there's no letter F, M, P. It's a guy, and then we go to Z. Hall of Famer. Oh, he reminds me of and I find it kind of amazing that right. nobody can find a guy who had a nice seven-year career because yeah, sure. you just want to go to the extremes. Do you value, evaluate at a high or do you evaluate at a low and then try to figure out if he's here at his worst? We can get him up to something that absolutely right. will play up here. So I, me personally, I take the profile of the player. Okay. So if I'm looking at a player and I'm envisioning a frontline starter, uh-huh. I compare that player to frontline starters. If I'm envisioning a back-end starter, I compare that player to back end starters. So I think the profile of the player determines who we count that player yeah. to. Because if you're drafting a guy in the first couple of rounds, relative to the talent he's playing against, he is a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. If he's good enough to be drafted, right. now the reality has to come in. The guy has a good three weeks in the major leagues, and everybody says, oh, let me tell you who he is. Mm-hmm. That's not really the truth. So right. I guess my question was, when you try to figure out, if we're really in a room talking about what we think this guy can be, sure. I'm assuming it doesn't go very often. To the hall of no, no, in the no, room. no. It's just something that's thrown around. Exactly. Like the yeah, I world. think. Um, he, I mean, Hall of Famer is so 
Yeah, it's it's very uncommon. Obviously, um, you want to be realistic. Yeah. Uh, I think with young players in this game, we might be a little more pessimistic as an industry okay. than optimistic uh, from a pro player standpoint. Yeah. But from in the amateur world, you have to have vision and you have to like players, and that's where the you know they're they're a little more on the opportunistic, uh, more optimistic on on evaluations and what a player could be, and you encourage them to dream big. Right. Okay, appreciate it. Okay. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for it.